the best and worst characters on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, starting with number five, the worst, Dennis Reynolds. Dennis Reynolds is a character who might come across as likable on the surface, but in all reality, he is a sociopath, he is a rapist, he videotapes people during sexual intercourse against their knowledge and or consent, he is a very cold-hearted, manipulative, and calculating individual, and the only redeemable quality of Dennis Reynolds is that he doesn't actually exist. He's not real. If he were a real person, he would be in jail, absolutely. And it's very sad, because Dennis is one of the more intelligent members of the group, if not the most intelligent, and if not the most well-educated. He has some type of degree from the University of Pennsylvania, with a minor in psychology. However, he uses all of his intelligence to fuel his own vanity and his own selfishness. But on the notion of redemption, a true saving grace for the character Dennis is the composition of the song Dayman, which would then be featured in the musical The Nightman Cometh. To illustrate, this is a song that is written by Dennis Reynolds and Charlie Kelly, and people point out that it's one of the few times that you get to see Dennis create something that is actually pretty good in its own twisted way, but not with any malicious intent, not with any ulterior motive, not trying to get a fast one over on anyone. You actually see two friends just trying to write a song together. So Dennis might be sociopathic, but he definitely is not pure evil. Number four, D. Reynolds, also known as Sweet D, also known as Deandra, and also known as Deandra. Did you guys ever notice that, that her mother called her Deandra, and Frank always called her Deandra? I don't even think that's important, so I'll just move on. D. Reynolds is a character that should be likable, and in the original design of the show, she was supposed to be the voice of reason or counterbalance to the ridiculous shenanigans of the gang, but I am actually extremely glad they didn't do that because I think there's something that is um, just a little bit more praiseworthy about D. Reynolds compared to her twin brother, Dennis, and that is that she is extremely neglected by the group by the gang, sometimes including Frank, sometimes not, but when she is around other people, her destructive tendencies come out, and she is manipulative, she tries to take advantage of people, she tries to cheat, she is indifferent to other people's feelings, she tries to scam, always trying to put other people down to prop herself up. So there's this very odd dynamic that she has with the gang. They're extremely mean to her, but at the same time, they keep her destructive tendencies in check. And she just has uh, this desire for acceptance, but her manipulative and sadistic tendencies, I mean emotionally sadistic tendencies, do not come out all the time when she is around her brother Dennis as well as the friends that are part of the gang. Dee appears to be somewhat intelligent. Sometimes she has ideas at work, sometimes she has plans that would succeed if it weren't for the interference of other people, but of course, her emotionally sadistic behavior limits her from actually succeeding in life, and she tries to destroy anyone outside of the gang, more or less, with the exception of just using other people for her own personal benefit. Number three, Frank Reynolds. Frank is the legal father to Dennis and Deandra. He is the man who raised them as kids, spending mostly their entire childhood and early 20s, late 20s, believing that he was the biological father of Dennis and Dee, but it is revealed very early on that he is not in their biological father is actually Bruce Mathis, played by Stephen Collins, <laughs> but Frank Reynolds goes on from being a conniving businessman to trying to live a life that is just somewhat different, that allows him to experience different types of emotions. He ends up being a roommate to Charlie, and Frank is also someone who is just a little bit 
less evil than Denison D because he's coming at this from a place of practicality. Most of the time, if he's doing something mean, it's for a financial motive as opposed for ju opposed to just pure emotional sadism and, and as opposed to just purely trying to destroy other people. It appears that there's almost always something in it for Frank, and there are reasons behind his evil behavior, so that makes him just a little bit less evil than the kids that he raised, but you can almost certainly see that a lot of the destructive tendencies that Dennis and Dee inherited came from their mother, and I was about to use a different expression to refer to her, but I won't. So, one more point. Frank's career as a businessman, whether it's traveling around the world and working at things like the sweatshop in Vietnam, has also carried it to his new life with the gang, because he still has a very sharp edge for business, but he goes about it in a very twisted and impractical way, because a lot of the time his plans do not work, but he still has some awareness of how to make money or how to represent people or how somebody should be getting a cut of the action, and again, there's a certain sense of cleverness that is not done in a purely inhumane way. Number two, Mac. Mac is a character that is just a little bit less evil than Frank because Mac isn't completely aware of everything that he is doing wrong. Yes, he is selfish. Yes, he puts himself first. Yes, he puts the gang first. But most of the time, he is just trying to balance out the other activities. He, If he sees that Dennis is trying to do something with people, then he wants to do it too. He is definitely more influenced by the more conniving and malicious individuals in the gang. And the trouble that Mac creates often comes from ignorance or just lack of awareness, as opposed to being cold-hearted. That means, of course, the number one least evil, most likable, best person in the main cast is, of course, Charlie Kelly. He is perhaps the best custodian that Patty's Bar could have, only because other people do not want to do the Charlie work, but if Mac is not completely aware of what's going on, then Charlie is absolutely the least evil and most likable person, because he does things that are conventionally immoral, but he's usually coming at it from a place of of goodness in his own mind. Say, for example, bothering and harassing and stalking the waitress. Well, she has said no to him many times, but he still believes in a fairy tale of true love with her. In his mind, he is not trying to be actively and directly hurtful. And through this type of comical innocence, it's just that. There is comical innocence for Charlie. There's something where he isn't completely guilty of all of the wrongdoings that the other members in the gang commit, because he doesn't know any better, and if he does do something wrong, it's because he's not aware of his own mental faculties. Do you agree or disagree with this list here? But... Before um, I sign off, I would just like to talk to you guys about It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. First, um, I'm really surprised the show went on as long as it did. At the time of this recording, I read online that it had been renewed for another four seasons, and it's very entertaining. It's very simple, but very funny. Mostly, you could reduce it to, all right, some people own a bar in Philadelphia, and it's them shouting at each other but they really did a lot with that. They were able to draw that out for years and years. And, by the way, do you guys notice this? I don't know if this is a correct observation or not, but in the early seasons, they would refer to Deandra as Sweet D more frequently, but then as the seasons went on, they did that less and less. I mean, I haven't exactly counted everything word for word, but another point, though, that needs to be clarified... I was only talking about the gang, and if you're going to look at the supporting characters, whether it's Rickety Cricket or The Waitress, some of them are even less evil because of all of the corrupting 
influences in their life because of the gang. And in short, they're just trying to be good people, but bad people keep taking advantage of them. I think that is most clearly exemplified by the waitress for all the reasons that I said in the Charlie segment, but she simply is not good at saying no. She's not good at standing up for people, for standing up for herself, rather, to other people. She is not good at setting boundaries and sticking to it. Or somebody like Rickety Cricket, otherwise known as Matthew Mara, is a little bit more complicated. He was a former priest who, quote-unquote, had his life ruined by the gang. He left the priest order because he thought that Deandra was going to fall in love with him, or maybe she was already in love with him. But I think that his character is rather complicated because he is someone who didn't actually want to be a priest. And I, I, I'm just kind of guessing here, but he didn't actually want to be a priest. But throughout the years, he overcame all the mean activities and the conventionally even abusive activities that he experienced and the humiliating activities that he experienced and he actually found a place of acceptance in the series that where there was um just um, a moment where he was not in any place of judgment and I think what we're meant to think about in the audience is his old life was not for him and that he adapted better to his uh, life on the streets, even though even though it doesn't always look like that, but I'm just trying to find some type of redeeming quality because I think that with fiction, we like listening to these characters and we like watching them because they are not real. If we knew these people in real life, I don't. I think it would be a very different story because well, they're just taking advantage of other people. They're coming up with ridiculous ways of taking advantage of other people that mostly don't even work. But now one point where I did not like the direction of the show, and you guys can challenge me in the comment section if you want, is I didn't like that they chose to make the character Mac gay. I thought that maybe, maybe the only reason to do that would be if the actor playing him was actually gay and then they just like don't want him to play a straight man anymore and you know he can be his normal self or actually do scenes with people whom he is genuinely attracted to but Mac is played by Rob McElhenney who went on to marry Caitlin Olsen who plays Sweet D so obviously he is not gay not completely anyway but I just thought that it was a very awkward turn for the show. It was very, um, it didn't really contribute to the storyline because there's just so much confusion going on with the early seasons when he's just always talking about trying to be with other women and he's trying to do things with other women. And I just thought it was um, not the best choice. It wasn't even adding that much in terms of humor. But can I... Um, I just share something a little bit more personal. When I would watch the opening credits, you know, you just see, like, the nightscape and the night skyline and so on. You don't really know who plays who. I was pretty sure that Caitlin Olsen was the actor playing Sweet D, but it shows how um, the show is um, featuring the actors, including Rob McElhenney, and Rob McElhenney also created the uh, series It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, I thought that Rob was going to be uh, Dennis Reynolds, and I, I really thought that. I mean, back in 2006 when I first started watching the show, and the reason why is because at the time it seemed like Dennis was such an authoritative figure. He seemed like just a little bit more of a leader, and as I said in the early segment, definitely the most psychologically dominant member of the gang. But anyway, it seems that um, my uh, observation was incorrect. No, Rob McElhenney is, of course, Mac. And um, I would really like to uh, see these actors in some more dramatic roles, particularly Charlie Day, because when I've watched him in other things, like he did the Horrible Bosses things, and he has a new show out, but I still keep seeing him as Charlie Kelly from... It's always sunny in Philadelphia, and I think that 
he could perhaps do a lot more. And other people say that, you know, just as a musician, he's a very good piano player. He could do something in a completely different direction. And one person who is extremely good at that is Danny DeVito. And they did a parody of uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And I was so thrilled to see the name Martini in the credits because that was the name of Danny DeVito's character in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And if you ever watched that movie, if you haven't seen it already, of course, Jack Nicholson gives an excellent performance, but Danny DeVito played a character like I've never seen him play before. His character's name was Martini, and it's just a very different role for him. And Danny DeVito was also somebody who is just really good at playing um, things that are all over the map, whether it's being a Batman villain or being somebody a little bit more comical. And... Here's something, though, that I read once, because we're talking about TV characters. When TV Guide put out the 50 greatest TV characters of all time, they said that Danny DeVito playing Louis De Palma on the show Taxi was number one. And I know next to nothing about Taxi. The only thing that I've seen are some clips of Andy Kaufman in it. And yeah, he does interact with Danny DeVito, and this, he's playing this character named Louis. Um, I wasn't completely... Uh, you know, blown away, but I definitely think that they wanted to show that he was some type of multi-dimensional uh, performer, even on the small amounts of taxi that I have seen. So that's where I'm going to leave it at now. Do you agree with my list about how, um, I guess it would be going Dennis, D, Frank, Mac, Charlie, in terms of um, evil, and um, I was tempted to say unlikable, but Evil to less evil, I guess, but we can also do it likable to um, unlikable or unlikable to likable, I guess is a better way of putting it. What do you think about this um, best and worst characters? Whatever it means to you, you can put your own list in the comment section down below. I'd love to read your messages. Like, subscribe, listen to some of the other uh, videos, and look out for some more things on the old-time TV show. Okay, until next time.